connected with European uh, uh, expansion in Asia were probably especially appreciated at the Lisbon court because ivory caskets had been known in Portugal since the Arab rule of greater parts of the Iberian Peninsula. Um, and they were treasured in princely collections in the cathedrals. And as you can see, like the Arab Iberian caskets, of which you see one example in the screen, the model on the Sri Lankan ones, much later ones, were made, um, uh, were following uh, European models. Not all these Sri Lankan ivory caskets um, uh, remained in uh, Portugal, however, uh, Queen Catherine of Braganza donated some of her Habsburg's relatives living elsewhere. There. Now, what strikes us in the representations on these caskets is the mixture of Singhalese and European iconography, the first type of imagery being part of a long tradition the second based on contemporary European imagery, that is early 16th century engravings. Sri Lankan ivory carvings, carvers blended these two sources into a harmoniously linked set of images. Now, the casket, you, this is a detail of this casket you just saw on the screen. Um, aha, yeah. This one is in a private collection in Portugal. Uh, and um, you see at the left a pair of stick dancers, a very popular uh, motif in Singhalese art. As you can see at, from this example, which is somewhat later, 18th century, uh, made for the home market. Now, at one of the sides of this casket, um, there's an image of Christ in limbo, uh, and you clearly see the um, engraving from which it is derived. It is an engraving uh, made by Lucas van Leiden, a highly esteemed um, engraver, uh, a painter in Leiden in the early 16th century, and apparently uh, his engravings, at least this one, was taken, were taken to Sri Lanka by Portuguese missionaries. Now, this is the famous um, Robbers casket in the Victorian Albert Museum. Um, as you can see, the lid is covered uh, with a uh, singly decorative pattern, that of spiraling vines, filled in by small animals. Tiny. Of other way. Well, I'm not very good. You see it for yourself. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, as are its sides, also with this kind of um, uh, decorative pattern. But the scenes on front are not only decorative, but are people in it. Uh, back pipe players on the front panel, left panel on the front, and um, there are, these are after European, on the right, oh, right and left. Um, and um, on the back, um, there are two images with uh, Mary's betrothal, and at the other side um, corner, uh, the rest on the flight to Egypt. And curiously enough, these are not um, copied from engravings, they are proper inventions. Um, well, of course, told by someone who knew about Christian religion, but uh, they do seem to be um, original inventions, really. Um, it has, to, has been proposed that the scenes can uh, refer to the conversion of King Dharmapala of Kota to Catholicism, which he did, and the birth of Prince Sim Sebastiano, the grandson of King John, and heir uh, apparent of the um, Portuguese throne. 
besides that the casket was sent to Portugal to the Portuguese court in 1557, right after uh, Dharmapala's conversion. But the relation of this imagery um, is rather speculative, and um, probably the casket was made some years earlier, but as you see, the name Robinson casket doesn't tell anything about the provenance, but that Mr. Robinson gave it to the Victoria and Albert Museum late in the 19th century. Now, nine Sri Lankan ivory caskets are preserved. It were made between 1543 and the mid-1550s for the Portuguese king and queen and for individuals connected with the court. They're all made of solid ivory. They're mounts and um, key plates contribute greatly um, to the costly appearance. Now, here you see four of these key plates and uh, Sri Lankan rubies over there. Sri Lanka is famous for its rubies are incorporated and um, Three of the, incidentally, three of the four key plates are in the form of a shield. Uh, of course, rather European uh, invention of having a key plate, plate in this form. Now, the manufacture of these most luxuriously made, uh, executed ivory caskets with a sophisticated iconography abruptly stopped. After 1555, no more caskets were dispatched as diplomatic gifts to Portugal. The realm of Cotter saw its power crumbling, having become completely dependent from the Portuguese forces in Sri Lanka. And indeed, in 1565, the Portuguese abandoned Cotter city, concentrating their troops in nearby Colombo, and stopped their military support for the Portuguese king. Only from the end of the 16th century onwards, the export of Sri Lankan ivory caskets to Europe took up again. Well, this is a uh, late 16th and early, or early 17th century casket preserved in Lisbon, as you can see on the screen. Its carvings are delightful, but its iconography is not that sophisticated as the ones we saw earlier on the screen. The delicate mixture of Sri Lankan ornaments and human, uh, uh, European imagery is absent. Moreover, the casket is not made of solid ivory. It consists of a wooden car carcass veneered with carved ivory panels. Now, where was this, ca uh, this casket made? Now, Cotter was no longer existing, really. Uh, it, it, the realm had collapsed. The city was devastated in um, the end of the 16th century, if I'm right, 1598. So, elsewhere. Now, in 15, 1540, so quite a bit earlier, the illustrious Jesuit priest Francis Xavier visited Sri Lanka and noted the excellence of ivory work in Matara, a town situated in the south coast. And Matara remained famous for its ivory caskets, uh, carvings, I must say, in the next centuries. Um, it goes on in 19th century reports also tell about Matara as a real center for ivory carvings. Now, ah, I try it again. Now here is Matra, and nearby Gaul. Um, is the main harbor of Sri Lanka at the south coast, and it also had probably uh, workshops where caskets and cabinets with ivory carvings were produced. Um, like Matra, the town was one of the Portuguese strongholds on the island. Um, I only found a 19th century observation about Gaul telling that its principal craftsmen were together with uh, cabinet makers uh, and wood carvers were ivory makers. 
not earlier ones, but there are no reasons to assume that these ivory carvers only settled there during the British period. Now, ivory workshops are also um, um, there uh, present in, 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 in uh, Colombo, I assume, but I must say I have no, not found any historical observation to support this. So we stick to the two very nearby centers in the south, Matra and Go. Now, um, Mr. Johann Matsaka, governor of the Dutch East India Company's possessions in uh, Sri Lanka in the 1640s, noted the city of Kandy famous for its ivory carvings, of course. But at that time, um, at that time, Raja Singhat II was the rule, ruler of the realm of Kandy. And, um, but Komraswami writes, uh, that presumably um, the royal workshops only worked for the royals. And um, there may, may have been also other studios outside the royal premises, but whether these worked for foreigners, I just don't know. Um, and I have reasons to believe that it was rather concentrated uh, in Matra and Go because these towns were first in full control of the Portuguese and from the 1640s onwards in Dutch hands. Uh, there is a third, well, also a center in the north coast, coast Jaffna, very north, you know where it is. Uh, I will come back to the Jaffna carvings later. Um, the next slide is the slide at, uh, in the art, London Art Trade, at least I saw it uh, two years ago. Yeah. Um, and I consider this uh, from Matra Go. Um, dating a little bit later than the casket I showed you before in the Lisbon Museum, um, which I presume was around 1600. Its carvings, as you can see, are carved like those on the chest we saw before. And a layer of tortoise shell is fixed between the wooden carcass, carcass and the ivory car carvings, creating a wonderful uh, effect. Oh, no, next slide. <laughs> okay, well, you can see it for yourself. Um, on all sides of the cabinet, Narilata, or scrolling vine motif, is rendered. Tiny animals are again incorporated, uh, and the decor, as you can see, is purely Singhalese. There are no European influences but for the shape of the ca cabinet. In the design of scrolling vines on a casket in the Rijks Museum collection in Amsterdam, various creatures are incorporated, occasionally tiny ones which we hardly discern. Oh, again, not in focus. Well, like these. Um, as in the car for other cabinets, which was just on the screen. Um, on its front uh, is a pair of uh, canaras, prominently rendered. Um, This is actually a drawing of such a creature um, from um, Komar Swami's famous book uh, about Singhalese art, which is a real classic, but I suppose you all know it by heart. Um, when um, the motif of scrolling vines includes mystical figure creatures, such as this Kinara, it's called the Nari. Lata Vela motif. Now, other mystical creatures, likewise often rendered in Singhalese art, occur also in ivory carvings on cabinets and chests, which were exported to Europe in the 17th century. As example, I show you an image in the Musée Guimet 
in Paris with a pair of singa or lions on its doors and the front of a box uh, preserved in the Musée, Musée Cambrai in northern France adorned with a pair of geese with long tails uh, as you can see, Hamza. On the doors of a cabinet in the Ashmolean Museum in Oxford um, and on the front of its upper inside drawer right, uh, Serapendia are depicted lions with long tails. Now the carvings on the back and the top of this cabinet are the clue for my attribution to, of this group of cabinets to Matra, to that Matra Go region. At the back of the uh, Ashmolean cabinet, um, there is an image of capturing elephants, and that's in an, a, a method in, in a coral, as you can see, a method of capturing elephants, which was quite customary uh, in the um, lower hills, well, near Matara, and. Um, Yeah, I think we should first go to next. Aha, uh -huh. yes. Uh, we discern both Europeans and Sri Lankan hun uh, uh, um, hunters in this image. Actually, in the 18th century, it spread also this method to other parts of uh, um, um, uh, Sri Lanka. This is a drawing by Jan Brandes, a Dutch draftsman in the eight end of the 18th century, and this was probably this drawing was probably made near Colombo. But anyway, uh, you can clearly see the method of capturing. Uh, uh, elephants, which should be captured alive because they were trade goods for India. Now, this does not indicate really that a proof that this casket was made in Matra, yet. Um, let's look at the other side, um, and we discern a peninsula its right part fortified uh, by three bastions. Um, two at the land side and one at the sea side. Um, behind this, uh, com the compound is a village. And at the far left, you see hillocks. Um, the sea above the peninsula is crowded with sailing ships, including European vessels. And then um, on the estuary and the river, in the lower part of the image, small sailing vessels are there and rowing boats. There is a ro row of ho houses at the other uh, opposite bank of the river, right, the river right back uh, at the bottom of the image. Now, an 18th century of, of, of watercolor with a ground plan, plan of Matra makes it clear that it is Matra, really. And here the hills start. I